First, thank you, Gary. So my name is Rafael Vega. I'm the actual president for the Asia CEO community in Mexico. Um, a little bit of myself. Um, I study my MBA at Fudan University in a program that is joined with, uh, food, with, with MIT. Uh, I graduated and came back to Mexico. And so far I have been working in several projects that, have, uh, that are related connecting Mexico and China and other countries. So um, for today, uh, thank you Gary for helping us arranging this first event of the Asia CEO community for the Mexican chapter. Um, as a Mexican, I think creating mutual benefits and facilitating the business connections between Mexico and Asia are vital. And this has always been my mission and ambition since I started my entrepreneurial journey. I do believe that building the relationships between Mexico and Latin American countries with Asia will benefit the growth of, uh, in, the, in the future economy. Reason why today, as we have discussed with Gary and Emily, uh, we started these events that will allow us to connect Mexico with Asia through the Asia CEO community. I don't know if Emily is already online, Yes, uh, but I would like if Emily, because we have worked together for uh, connecting Asia and China with Mexico and Latin America, if you can give us also like an, a brief introduction of what we have worked in this journey that we have gone through to connect that brought us here today. Sure. Can you guys hear me? Good morning, everyone. Yeah, yes, we yes, we can hear you. Out, yes. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Good morning, everyone. Greeting from Shanghai. Uh, so my name is Emily. I'm the founder and CEO of STW Innovation. Uh, it was my pleasure to be here present today for uh, Rafael's uh, events, uh, collaborate with Asia CEO community, and thank you, Gary, for supporting us. Um, so I started my entrepreneur journey actually is very early in 2014, and uh, founding STW Innovation, this is a company leveraging technologies to facilitate the connectivities between China and the world. And having been working with Rafael since very early stage um, to connect Mexico to uh, our network and also connecting with Asia CEO community. And I think that uh, the, the business connections that we establish here and providing you know, technical support with tourism and with cultural industries will enhance us to have a better you know, uh, common ground in the future. So I'm pretty much looking forward for today's sharings and understand more about uh, investing in Mexico and to see how we can facilitate the future um, you know, uh, trips or you know, collaborating with Gary to bring entrepreneurs to Mexico as well. Thank you for organizing this, Rafael, and uh, thank you, Gary. I pass back to Rafael. Thank you, Emily. Yes, as mentioned, as Emily mentioned, we have been working to connect since uh, I think around 2018, 2019. And for us, it's really a pleasure to be here today and starting connecting with all you, uh, all the members from the Asia CEO community among different countries in Asia and even in other countries. So for today, we have prepared, um, uh, we have a, our, our guest speaker. His name is uh, Luis Godoy. Luis Godoy Rueda uh, is the general director of the Global Economic Intelligence Unit at the Ministry of Economy, where he coordinates the data and economic intelligence team. Luis Godoy holds a master's degree in public administration from Columbia University, where he specialized in economic development. He studied economics and political science and has more than 10 years of experience in international organizations such as Econom the United Nations Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, the Data Pop Alliance, among others. He joined the new administration of President Andres Manuel López Obrador in the Ministry of Economy, and the new area on this, under his charge launched the Data Mexico platform, as well as other digital platforms that seek to support the productive sector to improve decision-making on public policies focus on innovation, inclusion, and diversification of the Mexican economy. Luis, thanks for accepting our invitation at the Asia CEO community. We are very grateful to have you here. No, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rafa. And thank you, Emily. Thank you, Gary. And thank you to all the 
HSEO community. And um, uh, and of course, for me, it's a pleasure to to be here talking to you about my country, about uh, some uh, economic information that I think it's relevant, uh, not only uh, as Emily mentioned, uh, for poten uh, as a potential as potential investors in Mexico, but also if you're interested in getting to know a little bit more about um, what is happening in economic terms here in Mexico, uh, I think this is a, a good space. Um, so let me just start by sharing my screen. Okay. Here you are. So just just to start, let me... Can you, can you see my screen over there? Yes, we can. I can. Perfect. So uh, first of all, let me start with a with a video that we have. It's in English, of course. Uh, just just to just to kick with some some information. So I'm gonna play here. Wait, can you hear it? Uh, uh, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Wait a second. I think I'm ready. Okay. Mexico is the top destination to invest in Latin America as an export power and one of the top 10 recipients of foreign investment worldwide. Mexico is a remarkable business partner. Here are the top 10 reasons to invest in Mexico. One, we offer preferential access for your exports. Our network of 14 free trade agreements allows preferential access to 50 countries, which represent over 1.3 billion consumers and 60% of the world's gross domestic product. Two, our country guarantees legal certainty for your investment. We have 30 bilateral investment agreements with 31 countries that provide legal certainty to investors. Three, we have a strategic location. We have consolidated our economy as the most important trading partner of the United States, and we are part of the most relevant free trade zone in the world, North America, thanks to the USMCA. From 2019 to 2020, $1.6 million circulated through our ports and highways every minute to the rest of the world. Four, we are a predominantly open economy. Mexico's foreign trade is a driver of economic growth that in 2020 represented 75% of our gross domestic product. And amid a global economic crisis, foreign investors rely on us. It's no wonder that in 2020, we are one of the top 10 foreign investment recipients. Five, we offer a highly skilled, productive, and specialized workforce. Together with Germany, Sweden, Portugal, and Finland, we are one of the top 10 countries with the highest number of young engineering graduates. We are collaborating with the private sector in dual education models for the specialization of the Mexican workforce. Six, we have macroeconomic stability. The World Bank recognizes Mexico as a country with great economic potential that in the last decades has achieved macroeconomic stability with low levels of inflation rate. Seven, over the last 22 years, 65,534 companies have invested in Mexico. The total investment that Mexico has received since 1999 amounted to $625.1 billion. We are an ideal partner for your innovative project. In 2021, Mexican startups have raised nearly $3 billion, a historic value over the last nine years. Eight, the South Southeast can be a suitable ally for your investment project. The federal government is developing strategic projects in the South Southeast region of Mexico to promote its participation in international trade and investment flows. The integral program of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec and the Mayan train are examples of such projects that will connect this region with the world. We're working on the facilitation of a development corridor for the establishment of enterprises in Veracruz, Oaxaca, Campeche, Tabasco, Yucatan, Chiapas, and Quintana Roo. 
Nine, Mexico's trade is highly integrated into global value chains. Our main exports supply the value chains in sectors such as the automotive, airspace, pharmaceutical, and critical minerals. 10. More than 1 million foreigners called Mexico their home. Mexico ranks among the top 10 destinations for international tourism, with more than 30 million foreign tourists a year. We are Mexico, the economy in Latin America for your global and innovative business. Let us transform your next project. Our home is your home. Gobierno de México. Well, that's that's the start of my conversation. I hope uh, this video shows you a little bit what Mexico represents. Uh, I'm gonna go deep into some of these arguments that we that that we present on this video about why Mexico is an interesting destination for investment, uh, especially now. Uh, first of all, as you can see in the screen, there's also a web page where you can find this video. Also, in that web page that is called Invest in Mexico, you will find all, all the information you might need in terms of investment procedures, uh, all of these economic arguments around why to invest in Mexico. Uh, you will find it. And of course, uh, after this, I can, I can send you the link or I can put it on the chat so you can go directly to the, to the web page. So... Um, just, just to start the, the, the conversation, um, last week, uh, as, you, as you know, we, we had he, here in, in the Americas, the Summit of the Americas, where the Interdevelopment Bank presented um, this very interesting, uh, these very interesting numbers. Um, on, uh, on, on this map, you can see uh, the total nearshoring opportunities for Latin America. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're all aware about what nearshoring means. But if you think about nearshoring, Mexico is the country uh, that is taking most of the advantages of, of this uh, economic phenomenon of the world. Uh, as you know, after, um, after, after 2018 with, uh, the, with the China uh, and the US trade war, uh, but also with COVID-19 and also with the slowdown of some global value chains, and especially now also with uh, the war between Russia and Ukraine, many companies are trying to get near to their markets. They're trying to get near to their global value chains. And Mexico uh, represents one of the most interesting places to do that. Um, as you can see in the map, Mexico, it's from far, the country that is that is going to take more advantage of, of these nearshoring opportunities. Uh, the total uh, additional export of goods that Mexico can take advantage of, it's around $35.78 billion. Uh, the country that is next, as you can see, is Brazil, but it's pretty far from, from Mexico in terms of these estimates. This, of course, is very interesting for us. And uh, I just want to show you some, some very updated information that we have from last week uh, that I'm sure is going to be interesting for you. Now, uh, Mexico is going through a process uh, right now as all of the countries of economic recovery. We're still on a pandemic, of course. Uh, however, Mexico is now pretty much open uh, to all businesses. We suffer, of course, some of the, some of the problems of the uh, COVID-19 uh, some of the economic problems of COVID-19, of course. So that's why we launch uh, uh, an economic program that is focused on four strategic um, uh, areas. The first one is we're trying to boost the internal market. Um, now we have recovered all of the employment around, around the country, but we're pushing different regions and especially sectors. Uh, second, we have a lot of interest uh, to recover in, in terms of investment. Uh, I'm going to go deep on this. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we're doing investment promotion and how it is important for the economic rec recovery plan. Third, international trade. Uh, Mexico, as you heard on the video, it is an open economy. And uh, actually, right now, all of the figures, our GDP is pretty much linked to the international trade. Um, our manufacturing companies are um, exporting to all of the world, especially, of course, to North America, 
but uh, and this is uh, and this is boosting and this is driving uh, the the growth of the Mexican economy. And the fourth one is we're trying to increase competitive competitiveness in in the small medium uh, and small medium enterprises especially. And we're developing this through different tools, different mechanisms, and of course uh, we're doing some interesting uh, fiscal incentive programs that I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. Now, to tell you why Mexico is a great opportunity and a great destination for investors right now, why nearshoring is interesting in Mexico right now. First of all, because we have a strategic location and we have pretty competitive logistic coast. Uh, we offer, of course, not only a strategic location for North America, which is uh, why we are mostly famous, but we are also, we offer some a strategic location, especially for Asian uh, companies for the market in Latin America. We are basically in the middle of the continent and we can offer opportunities to, to export to both the North and the South of Mexico. Uh, as you can see on the graph of the left, if you compare the, the shipping cost from, from China to US and to Mexico to US, as you can see, it is dramatic, the, 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 um, the comparison. Uh, only in, in average $9 uh, are the shipping cost from Mexico to the US in comparison with China, which is $140. Of course, this is an average of different value chains. But as you can see also in maritime days, Mexico, of course, it is well connected to many ports around the continent. And these ports are strategic for the market in not only the United States, but also to other parts of the world. We have more than 50 ports in, in Mexico. Uh, and these ports of entry are, of course, um, one of the reasons that Mexico is interesting in, in geographical terms. At the end of the conversation, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about one specific uh, project that is called the Transismic Project. That is the renovation of two ports. We're trying to compete, but also to be complementary to the Panama Channel. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that. The second uh, interesting data that I have for you is that, uh, and this is uh, normally um, people ask uh, about, about the competitiveness of the manufacturing industry of Mexico. And uh, as you can see in this graph, Mexico cost of production is more competitive than countries like China and even the US or Canada. We have a very competitive uh, cost in terms not only labor, but also uh, providers uh, and also different energy, uh, energy, gas and so on. So um, Mexico is as you can see, more competitive than India, Vietnam, and so on. So this global manufacturing cost competitiveness, it is, of course, related to most of our industries, mainly the automotive industry, the aerospace industry, and other manufacturing um, industries. Thirdly, we, as, as you already heard, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about this, we have a junk, competitive, and skilled workforce. Right now, Mexico... Um, of course, we have uh, a population that is ready, uh, that is more competitive than, than many of our colleagues in Latin America. But this is important. The strategy, the investment promotion strategy that we have right now is centered on human capital. The way we're trying to bring me uh, international companies to Mexico is by telling them that we can deliver the human capital they need. Uh, that's why we're developing special programs, dual degree programs with uh, companies in the north of Mexico, in the center and in the south, with our public in education institutions, also with some private institutions to deliver to the companies the workforce they need. As you can see in the graph, we have very young uh, population and Mexico, of course, is among the top 20, 10 countries with more graduates in engineering. Uh, I know that you're not only thinking about engineers, you're all, also, of course, thinking about technicians. Mexico also offers a huge amount of, of technicians uh, ready to work on different manufacturing industries. Um, and also, of course, uh, Mexico offers the avant-garde or the forefront of services 
such as uh, we have more and more data science, machine learning, and uh, AI um, students graduating and entering to the market. So basically we have all the human capital that, that, that the companies need. Thirdly, uh, as I mentioned, um, the average base salary for an entry level is just a fraction of the hourly wage in the US. Um, and this is important because we're also competing with the south of, 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 of the United States. We're competing to the very, uh, to a lot of money that is uh, the federal, the US federal government is putting in the US. So we need to compete also in terms of cost. Um, and the cost of fully burned labor for entry level workers in China is about the double that of Mexico. So this is only interesting for you to know. And so you're familiar with these numbers when, when you develop a strategy um, to come to Mexico. Now, um, of course, um, this is important for uh, probably for more specialized and depending on the sector, but since uh, over the past four or five years, Mexico has uh, experimented macroeconomic stability. We have a sound monetary policy that is of course in the hands of the autonomous Mexico Central Bank. The Central Bank in Mexico is autonomous and they're in charge, in charge of uh, development, all the monetary policy. Uh, we have a flexible exchange rate. We have no capital controls. And of course we offer comfortable access to international capital markets. Our Mexico, oh, the Mexico the debt is around 50% of the GDP. Uh, and in general, we haven't experienced the last four or five years uh, any changes on, for instance, um, tax rates. This is also important because um, this offers some um, stability for the companies. We're not passing, and, and, and this is also important to mention, economic stability is also related with political stability. And uh, fortunately, if, we, if Mexico, if we compare Mexico to other Latin American countries, over the past four years, Mexico has experienced uh, lots of stability. And we know this is important for investors. Now, um, also, um, and this is probably one of the most attractive things to mention, I would love to hear a little bit more about the sectors, about the type of companies that you have, but I can assure you that if you come to Mexico and if you export, let's say, a manufacturing product, a textile, an agro product, or any other product, I can show you how competitive we are in terms of tariffs and in terms of um, in terms of uh, regulatory processes uh, on trade policy. Mexico is one of the countries that has more uh, access to to international markets. As you can see in the screen, we have 14 foreign, foreign trade agreements with 50 countries. This offers, this offers an access of 1.3 potential billion consumers. So if you have a factory in Mexico, you want to export to any of the countries that you see in the map, you will have preferential access. Also, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Mexico has developed a strategy. Uh, we're actually right now having conversations with many countries, uh, such as Korea, the UK, of course, Ecuador, to strengthen or and to create if we don't have more foreign trade agreements. And this is a key component for our investment promotion strategy. But also we have foreign investment uh, protection agreements with more than 40 countries. I'm gonna tell you, tell you a little bit more about this. Um, Mexico has this 30 bilateral investment treaties which basically protect your investment if you come to Mexico. We have, as you can see here, countries from all over the world and also, of course, many Asian countries. Um, I asked Rafa before if, um, I mean, uh, from where are the, the most of the companies that are here today? And he told me that mostly you are from Hong Kong. So as you can see, Hong Kong, ha we have a bilateral investment treaty. And uh, also important to mention, Hong Kong is the 11th investor in Mexico right now. And all of this is part of the reasons that this year in 2020, we were already in the top 10, but also in 2021, Mexico was the ninth FDI foreign direct investment recipient. And of course we are the number one in Latin America. Um, 
So all of this, of course, is are some of the arguments that I have today. Uh, but let me just wrap up with some of these figures. Uh, Mexico, of course, offers lots of interesting opportunities in terms of quality of life and businesses. Uh, the U.S. Uh, well, we we are we are ranked third as starting a business on the doing business um, of the World Bank. Uh, we are the 31st globally on forward thinking. We are the 37th in terms of education, 39th in terms of entrepreneurship, the number 25 in international influence, and so on. All of this to mean, to tell you that um, we have lots of cities that are already uh, not only to uh, for executives, but also for families. Uh, so you can be comfortable in cities such as Mexico City, Monterrey, Guadalajara, Querétaro, and of course, in all of our beautiful uh, beaches around all of the country that right now are actually part of this uh, global phenomenon of digital nomads. Mexico is receiving lots of digital nomads over the past um, over the past few few years. So now, let me let me tell tell you a little bit more about this project that I think it's interesting for you. Uh, this is. Uh, a huge project that we're developing in Mexico, it's called the Interoceanic Corridor. Um, it is going to be, this year we're gonna, we're gonna launch the railroad that is going to connect, as you can see in the map, uh, in the south of the country, in two states that are called Oaxaca and Veracruz, we have the nearest point uh, that connects the Pacific and the Atlantic. Right now, as you can see in the graph, the Panama Channel is offering right now many problems of course there is saturation uh, and this project the interoceanic project consists of developing a railroad but also a, a highway between right. these two ports we are develop we are investing in the two ports the ports are called salina cruz and quatzacoalcos and the idea is to connect and and to connect the east of the united states mainly but also uh, the european markets to Asia. And as you can see in the graph, in, in, in the map, the days, if you compare the days to connect, well, it is pretty competitive and we are hoping this is going to be a huge success uh, for Mexico in the next few years. Of course, this is a long run project, but if you compare the, the days in connection between the port of Los Angeles, the port of Salina Cruz and the port of Balboa, well, Mexico would be very competitive, and this will be, of course, a huge advantage for many of the manufacturing companies and all of the trade world, the trade the sector around the world. Um, well, these are the main arguments. Now I'm going to switch a little bit more to tell you a little bit more about the economic relation and some data about Mexico and Hong Kong. Also to let you know how the investment, how more specifically trade is happening with some countries. Um, well, first, uh, let me show you these figures. Uh, the foreign direct investment from Hong Kong to Mexico has grown, as you can see in the graph. From 2001 to 2022, we, has, we had a huge uh, increase. Um, the share of FDI that we received from Hong Kong is 0.19%. Of course, we would be happy that that percentage, percentage increase. It is not a small part, but I think there's a lot of potential. In terms of, uh, of value, it's around 1.24 billion US dollars. And the main sectors that Hong Kong is investing in Mexico is first of all, transportation, secondly, manufacturing of transport, thirdly, manufacturing of furniture, and fourth, uh, professional services and science and technicians. The main city, the main region that Hong Kong is investing in Mexico right now is Mexico City, of course, the capital, but also uh, Hong Kong companies are investing in the north, in Baja California, in the center, well, in, in the center, in, in, the, in the west part of Mexico, Jalisco, and in Nuevo León. Um, our exports to Hong Kong have been uh, pretty much stable. Hong Kong's rank as the 28th Mexican destiny, and in terms of share of our export is around 0.5%. 17%. Um, the trade balance is from the data we have in Mexico is $384 million. There's a lot to do in 
Yes. But this is mainly our work. We need more Mexican products in Hong Kong that would be great over the next few years. What we are exporting, well, basically 15% uh, is machinery. Then we have also 61.8% of electrical machinery. Uh, and then we have, of course, the automotive industry, vehicles. Then we have copper, pharmaceutical products, and so on. These are the ports that are connecting right now Hong Kong to Mexico. As you can see, we have all over the country, we have connection with Hong Kong. Now, let me talk to you a little bit more about our trade regime with Hong Kong. We have an FTA, an agreement between the government of Mexico and the government of, the, of Hong Kong. Um, this is, of course, uh, this reciprocal promotion and protection of investment. It is an important, but of course, we can, we can deliver more. And we, we should take advantage of these sort of agreements. In terms of trade indicators, Mexico ranks 32 in Hong Kong imports and 16 in exports. Uh, we hope that in the next few years, we're gonna grow a little bit more on that regard. And in terms of the trade balance, of course, Hong Kong uh, has a surplus. Uh, as you can see, the trade value increased in 2021, which is good. And the, the export from Hong Kong, of course, increased to Mexico. What is the main trade? Well, again, electrical machinery appears. Then we have nuclear reactors, meat, vehicles, fish, fruit, and so on. There's a diversification, but of course, we need to uh, push a little bit more for certain products. Uh, and if you're interested in, in knowing a little bit more about what is our interest, well, Mexico has an uh, export promotion strategy, and we're interested in exporting certain products to Hong Kong. Well, what are these products? Just let me show you a little bit more. There are products, of course, as I mentioned, in electrical machinery, but there are also in medical devices, mechanical appliances, and textile. Here, this we, we develop this methodology so you can know a little bit more some of these strategic products that we have and that we think that are going to be interesting in the next few years. Oh, oh, oh. Finally, just to, uh, I think uh, I'm just passing my time, but just to, to finish, um, if you want more information, of course we have it. Uh, we have some digital platforms that are interesting for you. Invest in Mexico is one, but also if you want more uh, economic information, you can go and let me show you a little bit more. I'm just gonna, Stop showing my screen. One second. So if you want to go deep into the, and if you want to learn more about Mexico, a great way to do it is using Data Mexico. If you go to Data Mexico, here's the link. Of course, uh, it's in Spanish and in English. You can go to datamexico.org, datamexico.org. And then you will have here all of the information that you need. Let's say that you want to get, mm -hmm. if you want to learn more about Mexico City or Guadalajara, or let's say a specific state. If you want oh. to learn more about an industry, you go here and you, and you click, let's say, the mining industry. Probably all of this information that I gave you today, right. you want to go deep and more deep in the data of mining, well, you will find everything that you need here, the salaries and the workforce of the mining industry, the production of the, the GDP of this specific sector. All of these visualizations, of course, are connected uh, to the official sources. How are the production indicators per state and so on? Yes. If you need information about let's say, on a specific state, on a state in the north of Mexico, Nuevo Leon, if you're interested in, le in learning a little more about the economy of this state, well, you will have everything that you need here, the foreign trade of this specific state, the international sales, again, the net trade balance, per municipality, the foreign direct investment, and so on. So any information that you need, I hope that you will find it here but also we have other digital platforms such as Invest in Mexico, Comercia MX, Export MX, 
all of this information is online and um hopefully this has been useful for you guys and um, um the main message is that mexico is open to business we we are passing through a very interesting moment economic moment in mexico and uh i'm pretty sure that there are many opportunities and i would be happy to answer your questions and also we'll be happy to hear more about the companies and the sectors that you are uh, part of so i can provide a little bit more of uh more detailed information about you know investing in the health sector investing in the agri-industry sector and so on so thank you very much emily gary rafa and uh i'm i'm uh, i would be here to, to hear about to hear your questions thank you very much for all the information yeah. and the insights that you have shared with us uh, I'm, I'm sure we also will share uh, through Gary on all the in all the groups that he he has with the HSEO community. I um, mean this presentation, um, the video, and also all the links that you have shared yeah. that might be uh, useful for all the HSEO community members. But of course, I see that there's some members that have um, questions. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to, I mean, raise your hand and we can and we can start with the questions. Um, actually, I, I, I see there's two questions in the chat room. Okay. Um, there's one uh, asked yeah. from, um, uh, from uh, Mr. Ten. I think he's here with us actually. Uh, perhaps, um, uh, Mr. Ten, would you like to ask the question uh, directly to uh, Louis? Yeah, hey, Luis, thanks thanks for the information. And yeah, I, I, I read, I mean, when I watched a video that's uh, talking about this dual education in Mexico, uh, can, can I like to know what is the meaning of dual education? Thank you. Yes, well, that's a, that's a great question. Um, dual education is, is a form uh, of, it's a system that combines basically uh, practices in a company with a vocation, vocational education school. We have in Mexico different institutions, public institutions that deliver this. Uh, for technicians, of course, there's a big institution called CONALEP, and we're developing programs for specific sectors. For instance, we have a program for the semi semiconductor industry. Uh, there's, uh, there's a couple of companies in the north of Mexico, and they are offering dual yeah. education programs so this apprenticeship, the this students go to the company, they stay for a while, and then they either can stay or go to another company. But they, they of course learn all of uh, of this great uh, information and practices that they have inside the company. Um, we also have this with electromobility companies. Uh, first of all, because we need more technician engineers related with this new trend of zero emission vehicles, electrical vehicles. As you know, Mexico is a huge manufacturing. We're the number four a manufacturing exporter of cars in the world. So we are doing all of, uh, all of, uh, all of the, all of that we can, so that we can do this transition rapidly. And one of these uh, things that we need to, to do is to prepare um, the workforce. So that's why we're also offering dual education programs with some companies of the electromobility sector here in Mexico. I hope that was clear, uh, but if, if it's not enough clear, uh, I can offer you some of the information that we have. And of course, I can put you in touch with the uh, educational institutions that are doing this here in Mexico. Thank you, Luis. Thank you. There is another question from Mr. Simon. I don't know if you want to, is he, yeah, he's here. If you want to elaborate a little bit more on your question for Luis. Oh, um, Simon said, uh, because he's in the office, so he okay. can just type the question. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so the question is how, how to find out more, uh, uh, more about investing in Mexico for Singapore? Uh, he's an asset management uh, in the asset management business. Great. So um, thank you for the question. Uh, of course, we can have a specific conversation about Singapore. Um, you will find information in Data Mexico about the Mexico-Singapore economic relation. We have some data 
about uh, foreign trade investment and so on. Uh, I'm I'm watching my screen right now, and um, it is uh, similar. Well, we our export exports is like 0.42 percent of 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 the of the market that we have, and um, it has grown a lot. We export a lot last year, this year, to Singapore. Uh, this is very interesting. But of course, um, if you want that we can have either a conversation, a specific conversation about Singapore, so I can show you a little bit more about the trade agreements, about the investment agreements that we have, and also the data that we have about Singapore. Well, uh, we should have another conversation, but I will be happy to do that. Um, but in the same in the same way, we are super interested specifically uh, in these markets. And also if you are, uh, you mentioned that you're in which sector again? Um, uh, you're, in, you're in asset management business. As, so of course you, you have, you have a, a perspective for all the sectors and, uh, and, we can, and we can deliver some, some of this information. But yeah, thank you for the question. Does anyone has another question? Yeah, actually, uh, I have some questions that uh, because uh, today I learned a lot of data and writing a lot of notes about Mexico and Hong Kong. And I, I, I would love to know more about that Mexico and China as well. Maybe we can separate to uh, have another uh, event in the future because uh, I think that in China has a very good relationship with Mexico. And through the globalizations, there are more and more uh, Chinese enterprise they are looking for new markets to uh, tap into. And I think Mexico has a very strong strategic uh, positions in Latin America. So um, yeah, it would be great to understand uh, more about the policy, if there is any policy for um, Chinese or mainland China uh, entrepreneur for uh, you know, uh, investing in Mexico or also uh, from, from our uh, industry, which is technologies uh, company, right? So uh, is there any favorable policies that for uh, young entrepreneur investing in Mexico in the tech categories that Luis can share with us more? Sure, well, first of all, uh, about China, yes, we have uh, we have a very good and close relationship. We are working together with many Chinese companies here in Mexico. Uh, of course, as, as you know, China is uh, one of our main trade partners, of course, and, 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 and we have experienced an increase actually over the last year. So as you mentioned, it is very important for, for Mexico, the China market. Uh, and of course, for China, Mexico is a very important market. So any information that you need, of course, you'll find some information of this data that you were asking in Data Mexico. I, I, I already put the, the link in the chat. Um, but again, of course, if you want more specific information, I would be happy to, to share it with you, uh, Emily. Uh, about the specific uh, programs that we have for young entrepreneurs and tech companies. Well, we have some interesting uh, for certain sectors. We, in, in 2018, uh, Mexico was one of the first country, countries that published a FinTech, uh, a FinTech law. We have a very robust and uh, I would say um, interesting uh, regulatory uh, approach to, to FinTech. And uh, I would be happy to share with you some of this, but this provides a lot of uh, uh, certainty for uh, FinTech investors. We have a lot of uh, fintech companies uh, for various services. For instance, one of the most interesting uh, fintech companies is related with foreign trade. Uh, they're offering uh, different financial packages, products to, to exporters, uh, but that you will find, of course, from all over the financial sectors, very new and techy and interesting companies that are here in Mexico. Also, um, Mexico, uh, offers uh, for exporters some programs. Uh, tech companies, we have a very important unicorn in Mexico that is called Now Ports. I suggest that you take a look at it. It's a very interesting company in the north of Mexico. Uh, it's a startup that ra it raised good amount of money. 
and um, you I can connect you with them and then I can connect you with other startups tech companies that are experiencing here uh, the growing of the startup and tech tech uh, companies in, in in Latin America uh, I would say that we are competing here with Brazil with Chile which are both countries that are, are also very important in terms of of the startup and tech tech community um, uh, but yeah and um, this year I believe we had one of the most important unicorns in 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 Latin America that is called Kavak I don't know if you're familiar with this company uh, but this is some of the indicators that we have that uh, that the tech and startup community is growing also as I mentioned at the beginning um, many American US uh, Californian uh, companies are coming to Mexico many of these digital nomads are starting their businesses here in Mexico uh, because they're finding not only a good place to live and a cheap place to live, but also they're finding the right providers, the right services. They're hiring uh, and they're partnering with uh, young entrepreneurs in Mexico. Uh, they're hiring engineers, they're hiring data scientists, computer scientists, and so on. Uh, so um, again, if you're interested in more specifically one sector of the big startup tech community, I would be happy to put you in touch. I'm not a specialized in that, but there's um, we have colleagues here at the Ministry of Economy that are specialized, and I would be happy to connect you with them. Yeah, sounds great. Because we are, uh, our company nature is to leveraging technology, and arts and culture. So uh, we are also uh, doing some research on the Web3 uh, that how we can uh, leveraging this uh, NFT blockchain and metaverse uh, solutions to help uh, historical cultural heritage to connect with a widen audience in the new uh, in the younger generations. So uh, it would be great that uh, we can get connected um, to the tech circle and the community. Um, and me and Rafael will be pretty much happy to learn from the local entrepreneur as well to see how we can build up our strategic collaboration together. Thank you, Luis. Thank you very much. I don't know if anyone has any other question, comment. Uh, Luis, this is, uh, this is Peter Keel from the US. It's very nice to meet you. We're chiming in so late. I have a question regarding um, the ESG landscape in uh, Mexico. It's a two-part question. So my work is ESG, environmental social governance, um, and I'm wondering what the um, what the environment looks like there in Mexico, and also uh, if there is an appetite for uh, carbon credits or carbon tokens uh, in Mexico. If you can share some some information with me, I'd be really grateful. Thank you. Yes. So um, here at the Ministry of Economy, we have a special office in charge of that uh, Agenda 2030, the SDG um, office, basically in charge of all of the matters related with SDGs. Uh, they are the experts. I'm not an expert one, but uh, actually um, Mexico was one of the first, I believe it was the first country to launch um, uh, SDG bonus. Uh, I, will, I will look for it. I don't know, maybe Rafa knows this, but this was something that uh, the Ministry of Finance did uh, last year, I believe. And uh, apparently, of course, it has, it, it is, I'm pretty sure that it's an ESG uh, sort of a mechanism, an investing mechanism. And I, I'm pretty sure that it has been very well received in, in, in the markets and, and it has considerable success. So I'm gonna look a little bit more, uh, of course, but um, I mean, interest we have. I, I'm not the one that I'm specializing in this, uh, the Ministry of Finance is the one that is uh, taking a look at this ESG um, investment, uh, you know, all of the sector, uh, but also here at the Ministry of Economy for more specific projects, I can put you in touch with the SDG office. Perfect. Does anyone has another question? Any other questions? I think uh, 
Gary, uh, according to what we have uh, discussed today, mm. I see that there's like other locations that we might need yeah. to go in deep, like for example, Singapore or China. And yes. I know that there's different chapters, right? So it might be yeah. good if, if, um, yeah. according to the needs, if mm. we can check with the people of the other chats uh, from, yeah. from the different chapters, if mm -hmm. there's any specific interest, like, uh, of having this kind of conversation and going in deep mm. maybe to talk about Singapore or talk about mm. China or India or Australia, any of the other chapters that we have uh, for Asian single community. And then maybe if, if Luis can join us again, we can meet them for um um, for another another talk like this one that we had today. As yeah, that would be great. This is the start yeah. of like the these events that we want to hold at the Mexican yeah. chapter. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to connect uh, Mexico with the uh, Asia CEO community members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we might have more questions uh, after uh, we share the uh, this um, record with our members. Uh, I, I think it would be it's a good idea if we can have another event um, later on to follow up this event. Um, yes. So we will make sure um, this uh, re recording will be sent to all of our members. So then uh, we will get some feedback from our members and then we can um, organize another event uh, to follow up this event uh, so that we, our members can understand more about how they can invest in Mexico. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think that that would be great. That is actually a great idea uh, that we can uh, do it again uh, in the you know, coming, coming months. Perfect, thank you very much, Gary. I don't know if anyone has an additional question. If not, Thank you very much to Gary for uh, arranging this, um, this, this first event, to Emily for all your support, and of course to Luis Godoy for, um, for being here today. It's late here in Mexico. <laughs> so thank you very much for, for your presentation. And we hope we can open more uh, opportunities for Mexico through this kind of events that we are building at the Asia CEO community. Thank you very much to everyone for attending. And if you have any questions, maybe you can also have us at LinkedIn and then you can contact us and we can help you if you need anything. Sounds good. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you very much, much. for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.